For this special edition of Battleground, we look at today's federal budget called Growth and Equality. Anthony Fury, what's your big hot take? My big take on this, this is a very radical document. This is a left-wing social justice budget. I'm reading through it. Some of the priorities I'm seeing here, wow. This oh. would make Justin Trudeau from two years ago blush. It ain't 2015 anymore. All right. So today, of course, is the first day that the prime minister decided to actually show up to work after his disastrous trip to India. Do you think this is going to be enough of a distraction? Well, there's certainly a lot to talk about here and a lot of reasons to go, whoa, whoa hold on a second. What's that little line item you got there? So I think we, we will take a hiatus from asking mm -hmm. all the Jasper Atwell questions, although I think we'll be coming back. All right, let's uh, have a, give our viewers a little snippet of what they can expect. Well, this was the first budget that was done through the gender lens. Now, we were saying previously, what the hell does this even mean? I don't mean? even know what that means. I can tell you what it means. There is a whole hell of a lot of very kind of identity politics issues mm -hmm. in this budget. There's a women in construction fund. They're throwing $10 million out there because they would like to see more more ladies up there, like the the plot of Flashdance. <laughs> they want to see them, you know, being foreman on construction companies. Look, like, I, 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 no I, I think it's laudable that, you know, you want to encourage women to be in sort of non-traditional areas, but what actually happens to that money when there's not enough women that access the fund and say, you know what, maybe this is not the job for me. Yeah, no, what I, happens then? We all totally support yeah. women being able to go into these fields. Doing the whatever is, they want. Do we need this sort of social justice thing? You yeah. all love this one. There's a section called irregular migration, managing the border. What exactly does that mean? They are funding money not to stop all the illegal crossings that plagued our country last year, but to fund more illegal ports of entry. I'm not making this So up. when premiers who were on border provinces were saying and demanding the federal government do something, they actually completely ignored them and said, you know what, forget you, Pre Premier Pallister in Manitoba, we're just going to prop up those people that are actually crossing? Oh, they're doing something about it, Crazy. all right. They are further funding places like those Quebec illegal crossings. Okay, all right. Now, back to sort of some of the more social justice aspect of one of the things that I certainly noticed is that they have a fund... So get this, they're developing a fund to help those that are vulnerable Canadians access government funds. How does that work? Yeah, you know, it's, it's very meta, a fund to access funds. Basically, they're saying not enough people are going out and getting the free money that we're yep. offering to them. So we need a fund to create a program to teach people how to learn about the free money that's out there. Okay, and of course, the, the big the big one that the, uh, um, the NDP is certainly hammering away on the Liberal government is Pharmacare. So universal Pharmacare. Are we getting that or not? Well, we're heading in that direction. They've decided to call up a minister from Ontario, Eric Hoskins, mm -hmm. who's going to be championing this and kind of steerheading it. You know, that, that should, that, that, that's a classic lesson, mm -hmm. of course. You want something done well federally, bring up someone in Ontario mm -hmm. who's been uh, perhaps bungling these files for the past 15 years. It's, it's something. There's a lot of new stuff in yeah. this budget. It's kind of an, an addiction to things new. There's All not right. a focus on on, I would say, sound fiscal restraint. All right, well, speaking of the lack of sound fiscal restraint, let's talk about just quickly some of the numbers with respect to where our debt is going to be and what our deficit is going to be because all these bells and whistles sound really nice. And again, it's kind of the pathetic special interest public uh, politics we see all the time, little sprinkling around every special interest group. But someone has to pay, and the taxpayers who are watching us at home it's a, it's a hefty, hefty price tag. You're paying. Uh, that's right. The budget has gone up to $340 billion. In total, that's the money that's out there. The deficit, $18 billion. Now, Adrian, I will say it's not worse than what they projected it to mm -hmm. be last year. It's actually a couple hundred million dollars less. You go, oh, okay, they're actually doing better than they said they would. Sort of, kind of, because Trudeau campaigned on modest deficits, no more than $10 billion. We're still almost double that. 18 billion. And by the time 2022 rolls around after the next federal election, Canada's debt is going to be nearly $730 billion. You know, it took from 1867 until 2015 to chalk up about $600 billion debt all that time. Justin Trudeau has managed to add a whole $100 billion onto the debt mm -hmm. in just one term. It's He's sad. good. He's fast. Absolutely no fiscal responsibility because in the good times, we have, you know, 10 years after the economic recovery. That's what we've been into it at this point. 
and they haven't shown any sense of, of sound fiscal judgment. I mean, in the good times, you're supposed to be saving money, and the bad times is when they tell us we're supposed to be racking up deficits. Yeah, I mean, we broke that news last year. There was an internal finance department document that they really didn't want out, but it, it dropped around Christmas. We got a hold of it, and it said, if you continue on this pathway, mm -hmm. you are actually putting at risk the fiscal sus sustainability of the whole government. They're slowly inching away mm -hmm. from that bad scenario they were in, but is it fast enough? I don't think so. We're still looking at deficits until the 2040s. All right. Growth inequality for whom? Sounds like fiscal insanity. Log on to Facebook and Twitter and let us know what you think.